I gotta admit, they're absolutely cruel for having those floppy sausages hang by our boy's head as he's spilling his heart to poor soul who has to deal with his BS, but man, that uh, ED, aka emotional damage trauma there, hit our boy Rudy as hard as that isekai truck did, because we've known he hasn't been uh, the same person since the end of the first season, right? If we even rewind to, say, last week's episode, he basically ends up catching Sarah and he's copping a feel and he doesn't respond. Honestly, on one hand, ED has never improved the character's personality more than it has Rudy, but on the flip side, it also hasn't ruined a character as hard as it did Rudy, as seen by the end of the episode, where he was ready to slit his own throat because he's realized that he's just beyond broken. The current version that we have of our boy, he could stub his toe and he might just off himself because he's that emotionally scarred and broken. And honestly, as someone who said last week, as much of a D-bag as Soul was, I did appreciate the fact that he was honestly the best part of last week's episode, the most interesting, and... I was hoping to see more, and after episode 3 of the season, hands down, my favorite new side character. Like, I don't know if we'll see much more of him, maybe we never will, but honestly, for a first and last impression of what we've seen so far, I mean, this character has surprised me 100%. Now, full live reaction to episode 3 of season 2 of Mashuka Tensei is available on my Patreon if you would like to see my full-length thoughts as I watch today's episode. It is over there if you're interested. So, Rudy comes to terms that his little John isn't coming out to play anymore. And, you know, it's a, it's a whole big can of worms, right? So, he pretty much has been down in the dumps. Ever since Eris left him, he pretty much was under the assumption that, okay, love of his life's gone, he feels abandoned, he must have been horrible in bed, he must have been all these sorts of things. And over time, and especially by the end of the second episode, he was doing pretty well. Look at the start of this one, right? He's drinking, he's having fun, and he feels a lot more cheerful. And clearly, Sarah had feelings for him, and... She was rather hurt thinking that, well, he couldn't get it up for her, and then especially when he's basically in a drunken rage talking mad shit about her. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be seeing Sarah anytime soon, if ever again. I think uh, that's definitely bridges burned. But it's interesting watching how, you know, I know everyone's talking about rush pacing and this, that, and the third. For me, I really like the fact that we're just exploring a very small chapter of what Rudy's life will be. Like, Counter Arrow isn't going to be the endgame party for him. I would be shocked, right? This was clearly going to be something that was a small addition that would be like almost a stepping stone that would allow him to maybe start figuring out how to navigate life again. But they left such an impression, and that's why at the end of the episode, when you see her just be like, you know, that just, that was uncalled for, that's just, you know, this is basically the mom of the group just being disappointed in Rudy, and honestly, it's, it's not even you're mad, you're disappointed, it's the extra salt in the wound. And that's why it's a damn good thing Soul is there, because, you know, Rudy, you know, he pummels his face, it honestly feels more like Rudy's hand was bleeding more so than his face, I don't think it was hurting the same way it was probably hurting Rudy, but... The boy was crying, he was throwing fists around, he needed to get that out of his system, and just, I like the fact that, because they started off on such bad terms, you know, the fact that he just sits there and listens to him, and then immediately he's like, listen, you just have an experience, just go get your dick wet, and he hooks our boy up, and it turns out the busty beauty that's trying to help him out is the sister of the little girl who he ends up, I think it's in the first episode, when he's basically, he's removing all the snow and he heals, he does it for free, as it's confirmed. I like the fact that she tries everything, and rather than just, like, making him feel like garbage at the end, she's like, you know, they just kind of have a, it's like a little meeting, it's like, like, like a strategy, like, okay, he's just scared right now, we need to have something that's emotionally connected to him. And obviously we see, he's, the boy's broken, he absolutely is. And what I find interesting is how Mishuku Tensei, despite... We can look at so many things that may happen to Rudy or happen to certain characters, and as people who are mostly, like, in calm headspaces, we're not suffering these issues, we can objectively see, you couldn't get it up, it's not the end of the world. Or, you know what, you just need to get your head out of your ass and do this. We understand that this is treating it as, this is how this character feels, and if a character like Soul wasn't there, even if he didn't stab himself in the neck, without someone like Soul guiding him back and giving him a purpose, even if it's just to go clear a dungeon, the boy would have either became an incel, he would have killed himself, or he just would have led a very toxic mindset. But he has the right people, whether it's the cart ride into the village where Counter Arrow's like, hey, come adventure with us, or even Soul saying, bro, come help us. He's like, we don't hate you, let's go do something. And it's going to be interesting because we know we're building into the school, right? Because episode zero confirms that Sylphie and the princess were going to study somewhere as 
you know, get out of the kingdom before we get assassinated, and therefore we know Rudy would then have to go there eventually as well. And it seems like based on the title of next week's episode, they're probably trying to set that up, but obviously only time will tell how long it takes before we get there, and how long until Rudy realizes that, well, our girl is kind of in disguise, and the glasses girl is actually going to be someone that he's already met before. And probably Sophie will be the one who fully gets him over that hump of, uh, well, that emotional damage that is causing him quite the performance issue. But I do like how rather than just jumping into an episode like this with no, like, foreshadowing, episode 1 and 2 pretty much shows, like, even outside of, like, the broken mentality, like, there's so many moments that in season 1, Rudy would be, like, having a nosebleed, he'd be, like, just gushing blood at the sight or the feel of anything, and he had no emotion. Like, on one hand, the ED improved his character personality, but then on the flip side, we see that he's one step away from killing himself if things don't go according to plan. Like, things aren't working out for our boy, and it's a damn good thing Counter Arrow or even Soul has been there to help navigate him around, because, I mean, there's been, in just a few short episodes, how many times has he been smiling or just crying and being like, this is it, this is the end? Of course, we know it shouldn't be the end for him, but I love the fact that rather than just saying, Rudy, your feelings are wrong, you shouldn't feel like garbage, instead their characters are being like, hey, here's something to do. Give this kid a purpose, and then hopefully things will start working out a little better for him. To be honest, I haven't really paid too much attention to the discourse surrounding Season 2. I mean, anywhere you go anymore, they're always going to be complaining about things, so I just look at it what I see. I mean, it feels like Season 1 to me both art style and animation design, and I mean, the thing that was always interesting, the most interesting about Mishuka Tensei, was always how they handled the smaller character moments that felt so big for the character in question, and even if we as a viewer saw the easy path to overcome this, we're not currently in their situation, we're not in their mindset, we're not their age, we're not dealing with all the things they went through in their first life, and it all kind of builds up into an explosive minefield that is Rudy's life. And as we see with the after the credits scene, uh, we still have our girl looking for Rudy, and honestly, she lives up to her promises. She said, hey, I'll go into bed with you if you give me even the smallest detail. At first, I thought she was just going to walk away, but no, she carried that boy back, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where that goes, because you would have to imagine you don't just show that unless she's also going to probably pop up at the school or on the road to get there, but either way, I'm excited to see what they do. Now, of course, those are just my feelings. The ED, aka emotional damage, hit Rudy like an isekai truck. Maybe even harder than that isekai truck did hit him, but let me know what you thought, whether if you're a fan of the source material or if you're anime original like myself, let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell, of course, you can get notified when I upload more Mushuka Tensei to the channel. And like I mentioned, full live reaction is available on my Patreon, and hey, while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today, we have Anna, Nolan Palmer, Pokemon 222-888, and Hermes Hemp. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.